Hello, you're watching News Click, and today we are going to the United States where yet again Donald Trump, the former president, is in the news. Now, Donald Trump faces charges 34 counts of felony for concealing information for potential campaign fraud, for instance, related to various expenses he made. Now, this has, of course, become a big news, as I said. But how will really will it affect Trump? How will it affect the United States? To discuss all this, we have with us former Indian Ambassador M.K. Badra Kumar. Thank you so much, sir, Thank for joining you. us. Sure. Ambassador, first of all, I'm going to ask you to maybe look at the crystal ball a bit and uh, tell me whether the f number one question on everyone's mind is, will Donald Trump go to jail, right? Or is he going to be permanently out of the political spectrum? Do you think that's really on the cards? You see, Prashant, you know, I can only begin with what Harold Wilson said once, you know, that uh, a week is a long time in politics. Uh, I think it is evolving. That's the point I'm trying to say. And there are far too many variables in the situation mm -hmm. which we need to uh, account for as time goes, you know. As things stand, uh, there is even a, uh, to illustrate the point, there is even a thinking that uh, Biden has done this because he wants Trump as his opponent. Mm -hmm. there, is, there is a thesis to that effect. Right. You know, it may sound conspiratorial, but mm -hmm. it has an inner logic, you know, which I don't need to explain to you that, you know, that he would get a, a, a person like uh, Trump, then he might have a greater chance of winning the election himself, you know. And he is facilitating, in fact, you know, that uh, that thesis is that he is facilitating uh, the candidacy of the Republican Party to be falling on Trump's lap, right. you know, which is entirely conceivable, the kind of rallying that is taking place on even Mitt Romney and, you know, John Bolton and others. They are all, you know, flocking together saying that this is outrageous, this mm. should not have happened. Mm. So, you see, that's one component that, you know, the motivations uh, playing. But at the same time, you know, the uh, thing is, the, uh, Trump is uh, uh, certainly, you know, uh, having uh, a comeback mm -hmm. uh, in his own rating, you know, his own rating. And uh, there, is a, uh, there is a groundswell of opinion that uh, something very unfair has been done. And all this is uh, very ugly politicking. Uh, the fact is, is these contributions that he has got, you know, over exceeding $10 million right. just in a week's time, uh, far outstripping what any other Democratic candidate could get. Uh, it shows that, you know, that uh, there, is a, uh, there is a groundswell of opinion. Now, you see, that also we need to see whether, you know, uh, the second variable is that, you know, that how uh, from this point he may get easily, is much easier uh, way of path will be, you know, his path will be much easier in getting the Republican Party's candidacy, you know, the Florida governor and all in all these people, they will have a tough time countering him now. But then if you go by the first thesis, uh, Biden may have a strong opponent also. That is one thing. And the secondly, uh, you know, the thing is inherently these cases are weak. Right. And um, Therefore, you know, there is no surety that, uh, you know, that uh, he will be sentenced. Absolutely. If he's not sentenced, then he's uncontrollable. Exactly. <laughs> and it's uh, ironic because he, there was the January 6th coup attempt in which clearly a lot of involvement of the Trump team was there. He's not, you know, he's not facing any major action for that. There is the issue of, I believe, income tax fraud. Mm. There is the issue of concealing presidential documents. Mm. And there are cases in all of this, but this is the case that he has finally been nailed on, at least for now. Mm. So many people, I think, suspecting that this is probably the weakest of the cases that they had against Trump. It is. And also another thing is an anomaly here. Uh, I must point out, you know, that this is uh, really about the federal election. Right. And uh, therefore, you know, this should have come within the federal laws. But uh, the <clears throat> Justice Department in Washington, D.C. Uh, didn't think that there is sufficient enough uh, case to be made out of it, you know. So it's very strange, you know, that a district attorney, you know, to uh, would huh. uh, uh, come into this like that. So the, it, the credibility itself of uh, this process that is unfolding is in doubt, right? you know. Um, as it is, none of these uh, charges can prevent him from contesting the election even becoming the president of the United States. There he can be stopped only if there is one particular count which shows that, you know, that he tried to organize an insurrection. Hmm. 
Now, I don't think we are anywhere near that. Right. You know, the, the, with all the attempts that were there, you know, they couldn't pin him down there. And then, uh, you know, the sing another big factor is Trump is a fighter, hmm. you know. And um, uh, he, this is not new for him. Uh, his, uh, the fact is Obama administration's time, the Attorney General and others had uh, uh, kept a surveillance on even his campaign missionary. Right. And then uh, from day one, he was under attack by the deep state. And this Russia collusion, now in retrospect, we know that uh, it was a, a very well-planned, orchestrated attempt to paralyze his presidency. Mm -hmm. You see, this uh, recently I read, you know, about Richard Nixon faced the same thing. Eisenhower faced the same thing. So uh, Nixon's also the other one is, you know, Nixon's other side of Nixon is, you know, that he wanted the thong with Russia and he wanted to open line with China. It's very stra strongly anti-communist though, his mindset. He wanted it as a pragmatist, you know, he thought that right. the United States needed it. Eisenhower again had the same approach towards Russia, Soviet Union. So the deep state, you know, immediately got into the action. Trump was the same thing. Trump had uh, made no bones about it that he intended to improve relations with Russia. So the Russia collusion thing was brought in. And virtually now we know that his four years of his presidency, it was paralyzed because of this uh, Russia collusion thing. You know, anything that he would take in terms of improving relations with Russia, so that he can, you know, bring back the troops and he can concentrate. He tr wanted to bring the troops back from Syria, but, you know, he was uh, he, not getting anywhere. Right. And it is uh, the same with, uh, you know, Afghanistan. So um, the man did not, he had also the problem that he was an outsider. Hmm. Uh, the Washington bureaucracy is, uh, the permanent establishment is uh, very tough. You know, they, they, they disdainfully look at politicians anyway. And because they control and they are in league with uh, Wall Street, military industrial complex, the intelligence establishment, Pentagon interests, all those things. And it's a very formidable uh, front. So you see his uh, presidency is paralyzed. But uh, this time around, I get a feeling that, you know, that the man knows also he is, um, he is more experienced in working the system and uh, hopefully he may not make those kind of mistakes which he made. It's a very poor judgment he had of human character. Right. He got into his uh, cabinet people who were guaranteed to undermine his uh, political program. Right, but Ambassador, just to sort of extend the point you were saying, Trump's years were uh, strange, so to put it. Like on the one hand, he escalated the attacks on Cuba and Venezuela on one hand. Mm -hmm. Uh, on Iran, mm -hmm. of course, he worsened the situation, in fact, brought the region very close to a war. Mm -hmm. He did escalate issues with China, although not as badly as Joe Biden has done. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, like you said, there were also sort of attempts to, uh, you know, kind of maybe draw back from this state of perennial conflict. Mm -hmm. So how do you sort of understand this kind of a policy framework where it is not a complete withdrawal from the US of the traditional US policy? But there are nonetheless some uh, bits of trying to be different from the deep state's methods. So it's a very, very, uh, very interesting question. You know, that uh, that uh, contradiction is there. You know, it has been pointed out by a lot of people. But uh, essentially, you know, the thing is the kind of program, the kind of, uh, you may call it vision, you know, foreign policy vision or the, the, the national priority, the package that he had, um, you could not compartmentalize it. It had to go uh, as a package. Mm -hmm. And then I, when I analyze it, I feel that um, uh, an important component of it, like uh, Russia and even with China, you know, the point is, you see, if you get people like this, uh, uh, this Secretary of Defense, Secretary of State, you know, none of them, the incumbent officials there, none of them was in sync with his thinking. Right. So you see a number of these situations, uh, Prashant, which you detail, uh, they, the attitude, the policy, the approach, everything is on the basis of <coughs> what the underlings prepare. Hmm. And um, 
I don't know to what extent, you know, his, his attention span is notoriously limited, right. you know. Now, when you have a man like John Bolton, for instance, hmm. as your national security advisor, uh, after all, you know, he gets uh, options A, B, C. But it is out of the three that he has to choose. Right. So, you know, uh, he, he, I don't think he, ever, he stood a chance, you know, uh, this one. That's it. That's why I said that about uh, two, three days ago, there was a, a very beautiful essay on this, uh, putting together all the evidences that were there in spread over various books, you know, it'd been written about, uh, about the Nixon presidency. Mm -hmm. And it is stunning, you know, the, 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 the similarity. So, you know, it's not uh, a propagandistic thing that this deep state is frightening. And, you know, the Eisenhower, in his farewell speech, made that famous the military industrial, you know, complex. military industrial yeah. complex as a threat to democracy. Now, they're actually prophetic words when right. you look at it, you know. Yeah. So, you see, uh, coming back to what you said, therefore, I subscribe to the view that uh, if he had, for example, proceeded to improve relations with Russia, and he, uh, he was confident that he had the capacity to build a working relationship with Vladimir Putin. If he had done it, then you know the thing is the alchemy would have been different of the world politics, you know. And uh, there would have been a conversation with Putin. And Putin would have also, you know, uh, helped him in a certain way like that. And a number of these situations may have taken a different turn, right. you know. That didn't happen because uh, there is a log jam there. So on the main plank is a total stalemate and he right. couldn't and he was under assault, you know. Mm. He, he, he was on his back foot. Right. And then these underlings would bring up, you know, all these peripheral issues, you mm. know, of uh, uh, Cuban cigars and, you know, flights to Havana and all that kind of things. And it went into a very different kind of a right. track. Yeah, right. Interesting. So, <clears throat> but Ambassador, going back a bit to uh, the character of Trump itself and the U.S. current political U.S. establishment, there is a sense of complete collapse as far as the U.S. political establishment is concerned. And I think the traditional establishment and one of the signs has been for many years the emergence of Trump because in some senses he has defied he has defied everybody. He's swamp. He has, he has defied all the swamp. Huh? Mm. He has defied the expectations of what people traditionally thought that what would harm a politician has not harmed him. Mm. Like you said, uh, uh, an indictment filed against, a, against him has actually helped him raise money. Mm. And in fact, I think the, his team printed t-shirts with him behind the bars or something and raised money that way also. So, uh, in that sense, how do you see the phenomenon of Trump itself in the context of how the people in the U.S. feel about uh, the political establishment. You know, what is the constituency of people who are so unhappy with the politics as it is that they support, uh, in, they support a millionaire, right? A lot of poor people support a millionaire who tells them that the state is a problem. Mm -hmm. It's a very ironic situation in some senses. Mm -hmm. So, what do you, how do you read that? You know, basically, this is the phenomenon of the uniparty. Mm -hmm which has alienated the public. Uh, it developed over a length of time. And now we know very well that, you know, that uh, presidents may come and go, parties may change, the ruling elite may change. But essentially, um, there is a uniparty ruling the country. And the same policies are continuing. Uh, the neocon policies yeah. were, uh, can be identified with uh, uh, Bill Clinton, with George Bush, with Barack Obama, even, right. you know, and they came down to, you know, Biden now. Right. So you see, this is the kind of thing. And the people really basically in the democratic process there, the people have no role today. You know, if you, if you explore deeply into it and dig for the truth, what has happened, you know, now, Trump said yesterday or day before yesterday, in his no, after this um, uh, arrest and all that, he came back to Florida to his uh, mansion, and there he gave a uh, very interesting speech. You know, and there, one of the things he mentioned is this: that uh, how uh, we are used to some of these things in the Indian context. You know, uh, he he said, you know, that the electoral laws there has been fudging. 
you know, you know, uh, we don't, uh, and there, you know, earlier time when he mentioned these things and he raised a hue and cry over it that this is unfair, this is not a level playing field, uh, we thought, you know, that he was, you know, uh, <laughs> getting into a blame game. But now the point is there is a sense of helplessness and despair. Mm. These things are happening in America. So the, the people's attitude towards these processes is that, you know, that they are now looking at it that, you know, they are not having any impact on policies. Right. The Uniparty is ruling the country and it's a kind of a musical chairs, mm. you know, it's just going on like that. That is the one part of it. And then uh, the anomalies in the electoral laws, you know, has reached such a point that uh, the outcome of elections can be easily manipulated today in the US, you know. And then, you know, their archaic system mm. is such that, you know, the, um, the uniformity is not there in the whole country. Right. Different states have, you know, enacted different uh, laws, you know, and they work differently in the local conditions there. So I think all these things are there. And then the then the, there is a very strong economic content to it right. in the sense that uh, the, uh, the, the inequities in the society, it's a well-known fact. It has been written about. There's plenty of data available on that that, you know, that there's a very big and the distance is widening, you know, the, the, a small section of uh, the population is arrogating the wealth and uh, the uh, impoverished people and the middle class uh, yeah. particularly has been badly squeezed and uh, they are no longer, you know, able to have that kind of uh, middle class way of life, frustrations there. Then uh, the kind of deindustrialization which took place in the right. U.S., as a result of which the working class is alienated also. So then there is a very big powerful component of uh, the religious constituency, mm -hmm. the Christian constituency. So all these things came into it and his, the, 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 his major attraction in the, 19, uh, in the 2016 election was this, that he was an outsider. Exactly. That itself, you know, drew, uh, he could draw people like a magnet, you know, mm -hmm. to him. Mm -hmm that here is someone, you know, who is standing outside the uni party and is promising. Of course, he didn't deliver. But, you know, even today, that attraction will still be there because right. this antithesis, he, nobody is going to be able to articulate so persuasively as Trump can, you know. The closest to me was maybe Sanders who came to actually... Sanders is different. Exactly. Uh, it's, uh, the pity of the situation is that, that... Uh, this uh, uh, this could have been channeled in a creative way huh. and it would have found creative and a positive agenda mm. in the hands of a politician like Sanders. Right. But, um, uh, you know, he's, um, um, the quality of leadership that Trump could give and can give even if he gets re-elected now is very poor, mm. you know, because he has very severe limitations right. of, of, for a national leader. Mm. Sanders is not that, you know, Sanders has uh, been in the Congress and uh, he knows how to work the system mm. and he also has a kind of, um, what can you call an, a, 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 an outlook, how to, uh, you know, correlate foreign policy with domestic policies and in domestic politics prioritizing in a certain way and, you know, the uh, left of center politics, you know, that right. he represented. So Sanders would have been, uh, Sanders would have probably been America's salvation hmm. if he had been. And I think, again, the problem there is that, again, uh, the deep state and, you know, those uh, entrenched interests, the uni party, uh, would have uh, felt very uncomfortable. Right. Because, you know, he was, uh, he, he was, uh, he deserved the candidacy hmm. even in 2016. Hmm. But then he was outmaneuvered right. and he was persuaded to give up and hmm. throw in the towel and walk out. Exactly. You know? Right. So, Ambassador, finally, uh, I mean, right now for the Democrats, it's a very complicated situation to say the least. Mm -hmm. uh, like you said, Joe Biden mainly won the last election because he was not Trump. Mm. That was that was pretty much his campaign plank, mm. however much he sought it. Mm. And all the promises he made during the campaign, he has pretty much failed to deliver. In the huge infrastructure packages, hmm. it has been large, largely curtailed. Social spending, again, hasn't really worked out. 
his own, he's not even brought his own party together. Forget bipartisan support that he had again promised. Mm -hmm. But there have been maybe some marginal improvements in the economic situation. Mm -hmm. So does it look like right now the Democrats really have a plan except, like you said at the beginning of the interview, to be the not Trump party? You know, the, uh, uh, the uh, 2016 uh, mood <clears throat> the, was one. Uh, that, I think, uh, Trump is probably going to be in a position to recreate. Mm -hmm. Trump has a greater chance in 2024. Right. Uh, as far as Biden is concerned, the 2020 mood, he cannot recreate in 2024. Okay. I think even within his party, it is palpable that there isn't that sort of enthusiasm for him. Mm. And, you know, that they would have liked it if this man had just walked away mm. from the ring mm. altogether mm. and left the party to, you know, and that would have been the party's best option, you know. But then the point is an incumbent president, if he wants, a, if he wants to make a re-election bid, it's not in their political culture and it is not within the party for anyone to stand up and say, no, you are no good. Right. It's running down and it's suicidal for the party mm. to do that. So you see, the, it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a catch-22 situation for the Democrats, basically. They're stuck with this man. Uh, but I don't, think, I don't think that he will be able to recreate that uh, uh, 2020 mm -hmm. uh, juxtaposition mm -hmm. that he managed to managed as the winning card for himself right. you know thank you so much ambassador for taking us yeah. through some of these nuances of u.s politics yeah. and we hope to talk to you soon thank you. thank you so that's all we have time for today this is definitely a developing story a story that will develop this year it'll develop next year until the elections and we'll see what happens until then keep watching news click